Good Thursday morning. This is the Great Basin Fire Potential Briefing. Taking a look at some of our significant impacts or issues, no significant impacts in terms of large fire. However, we do expect much hotter and drier weather developing towards this uh, coming weekend, and uh, that will drive temperatures about 15 degrees above normal, minimum humidity down into the single digits in much of our uh, southern two-thirds of our basin area. Look for accelerated curing and drying of grasses and fuels during this time period, and with that, we do see the potential of some lightning without much significant rain uh, by either late Saturday or on Sunday across Nevada, maybe moving a bit eastwards uh, early next week. Fuels, at least our larger fuels, are not critically dry to support large fires, but a general increase in fire activity, smaller fires, uh, a good likelihood by this weekend, especially across Nevada and parts of Utah. Precipitation over the past 24 hours, fairly light and scattered, uh, just some light showers across parts of Idaho and also some isolated showers across parts of central Nevada. A handful of strikes in Nevada under uh, some of that activity as well as in the mountains of Idaho. Uh, however, fuels in these areas, especially up in Idaho, are still quite moist. Now, if we look at observed precipitation over the past week, you can see amounts fairly light. We have not had too much significant activity. The best we can find is here across central Nevada. Uh, much of this was uh, quite a few days ago, so they've been steadily drying out. Taking a look at our forecast fuels, at least uh, the heavier 1,000-hour fuels across the nation, and we focus on the Great Basin, uh, quite moist up through parts of Idaho and Wyoming still. Uh, we do see some critical fuels now developing on the heavier side across parts of southern Nevada. However, their main fuel driver, except for a few localized areas, are lighter fuels. Here's a look at our 100-hour fuels, and we want to focus a bit across our southern areas, across far northwestern Arizona and into southern Nevada. You can see we already have uh, critically dry 100-hour fuels at or below 5%, uh, somewhere between 5 and 10% further north. Our upper air map with infrared satellite imagery shows a frontal system pushing through the Pacific Northwest into the northern Rockies. It looks a bit more ominous on the satellite imagery than it is in real life. A lot of this cloud cover will break up, but it will keep things cooler across our northern areas through Idaho and through parts of Wyoming. Uh, further to the south, we're in the clear, and we notice this ridge of high pressure, which will be building across the area with increasing heat uh, for the next couple of days. And way back down here is a weak low pressure area, not too much moisture associated with it right now, but we'll be watching its track uh, towards the west coast by the end of the weekend, and maybe the possibility of some lightning following some very hot and dry days. Here's our significant fire potential this afternoon. Most areas in the green or moist category, but we are starting to see a moderation in some of our fuels and fire potential uh, areas here in the south. And that's going to be a trend, and uh, that will continue due to the hotter and drier weather that we are expecting. For this afternoon, max temperatures we start out, we start seeing temperatures uh, well up above 100 degrees um, in some of our southern areas through here. At the same time, humidity levels well down into the single digits. So a uh, big concern as normal this time of year as we work away from northern Arizona into the southern portions of Nevada and southern Utah. We do see a gradual increase in humidity as we go further north, especially up into Idaho and Wyoming. Now if we go into tomorrow's forecast, on the left you see high pressure building across the area. Lots of dry air, lots of hot air, that by far uh, the warmest temperatures of the year so far. On the right-hand side, you see that um, our fire potential remains moist. It's going to take a couple of days of hot, dry weather to affect parts of central and northern Nevada and Utah, uh, but we'll see a quick response uh, further south. You can see our neighbors ready here in California and Arizona are going to the very critically dry category um, at that time, so that's something we'll be watching. Friday afternoon, temperature-wise, again, pushing up uh, very hot, about 107 degrees or so in Las Vegas. Uh, low 100s and 90s elsewhere across southern Nevada and southern Utah. Humidity in a lot of areas uh, getting to the single digits to low teens. And that's pushing over just about all of Nevada, uh, much of Utah at this point, and even trending drier in areas further north. 
Now, during this time period, uh, in terms of winds, on the left-hand side this afternoon's winds, fairly light in all areas except further north up into uh, uh, parts of the uh, Snake River Valley and into eastern Idaho and, and parts of western Wyoming, some gusty winds, but um, where we're concerned about in the south, uh, light southwest winds, basically 6 to 12 miles per hour in most areas today. Tomorrow afternoon, those winds become even lighter, light and variable, maybe 0 to 5 miles per hour in areas that we're concerned about. And 3-day precipitation total, none expected across the area. That's another concern. We'll see a rapid drying of our fuels. By Saturday, we see that ridge of high pressure dominating and pushing northwards through here again on the fire potential side. Even though our northern areas remain moist, notice that our southern areas have now turned critically dry across parts of the Arizona Strip and uh, far southern Nevada because of that increasing heat. And if we look at temperatures and relative humidity on Saturday, again, we see some low to mid 100s in our southern areas, uh, then pushing to the 90s across much of Nevada and southern Utah. Still staying on the cool side across our northern areas where um, high temperatures uh, will be mainly in the 70s. Single digit humidity here seen on the right hand side across many of these uh, shaded areas again. So that's going to cure our fuels around the clock as we go through the period. And on Sunday, see the high pressure ridge building northwards again. A few blips of light green through here indicate there might be just enough instability with a little weak low near Tahoe that we could see some isolated lightning. On the right hand side, in terms of our fire potential and fuel dryness, we were moderately dry in those areas, but still critically uh, dry across our far south. Then as we take a look further down the road on Monday, we're still in an area of broad high pressure, but there uh, are some blips of higher moisture levels through here as you see in those green shadings. Could be some isolated lightning through those areas. Um, in Utah, we're not too concerned in those areas because most of our fire potential is still in the green. But any lightning that occurs across central and southern Nevada and maybe across the Arizona Strip, if it reaches that far south, still a question mark, uh, that would be a concern for increased fire activity. And looking down the road for Tuesday, uh, the high pressure ridge starts shifting to the east. We're still under its influence, but still um, some shreds of instability through here. So maybe some isolated showers or lightning across cent south central portions of Nevada, maybe into parts of Utah. We'll have to monitor that. Our southern areas will continue to dry uh, quite rapidly. And then as we go into Wednesday, the high pressure shifts away. We see a weak trough of low pressure coming in. That should be a cooling trend. Uh, but still, our southern areas, even though they'll cool a little bit, the, it'll still be several degrees above normal. And normal this time of year is pretty hot and dry. And our fire potential continues on the right-hand side. And looking at total precipitation accumulated through the entire seven-day period, as we get some of that convective shower activity, uh, very light amounts in that first shade of green. So any lightning that occurs across central portions of Nevada um, will be problematic for new fire starts, although the heavier fuels don't support large fire growth. We could start seeing fires in that 5 to 50 acre range starting to pop up if uh, the lightning hits in the right spot. Further to the north, anywhere from a third of an inch to over a half inch of rain into the mountains of Idaho and Wyoming, they should stay fairly green up there in the north. And looking at our extended outlook uh, for the 8 to 14 day outlook, June 9th through the 15th, temperatures uh, near to slightly above normal across most areas, but about normal in the north. We'll be going to a cooling trend towards the end of uh, the first seven day period. So um, looking at precipitation, above normal chances across areas that are still quite green up through Idaho and into parts of western Wyoming and northern portions of Nevada and Utah as well. This concludes our briefing. Have a great day. Next briefing will be coming up tomorrow.